Hello? I am Mark Callahan. I work on small data or transaction processing at Facebook. Uh, we're jealous of the hype that uh, big data gets, so we're trying to bring small back. My focus is storage efficiency. Uh, we have uh, a lot of data at work, so uh, a few of us focus on uh, reducing the amount of storage hardware we need to store that data. Uh, I also named the project uh, Myrox for the, the engine, so I'm very happy about my contribution to the effort. Myrox is, uh, so RoxDB is a log structured merge tree. It started out as a fork of LevelDB. Um, it's changed so much at this point that I don't, well, it used to be a fork. It's its own project at this point. Myrox is a MySQL storage engine, so we implement the storage engine API for MySQL. Uh, many people have tried to do this. It is hard to implement the storage engine API. Uh, we are doing it. It runs in production today. Uh, a few months ago, uh, we announced that it's running on about 5% of the, the database servers in one of the data centers. Um, we've gone significantly beyond that. We just haven't been specific about how far, um, how much progress we have made. So this is something that's running in production. Um, it's, it's real. Um, it will eventually be uh, usable uh, for people beyond Facebook. Sergey Petruni is here. I like to always acknowledge his contribution. Uh, he is a significant contributor to Myrox. We would not be here without his effort, so I appreciate that. Um, the brief editorial I just wanted to say, for a few years there, I think, um, doing web scale MySQL, I got a lot of advice from people about what I should be doing or what I should be using. Um, maybe I don't get that much advice anymore. Um, it, there were some dark years and there were some perf some issues with the product that kind of earned the reputation, but we're in a very different point right now. So if you just look at features, there were several talks today about uh, group replication, synchronous replication uh, in MySQL, and it's a, it's a really big deal um, not losing commits. If you look at performance in MySQL 5.7 and, and MySQL 8 with what they've done for InnoDB, it's a really big deal. In terms of usage, um, I gave a community talk a few years back, and at the end of the talk, someone said, well, you're just using MySQL because it's legacy. Um, it was an interesting opinion. Uh, we are competing for and winning new workloads at Facebook. Um, I'm going to be vague because I haven't been clear to talk about all of these workloads, but one that was disclosed in public was we put InnoDB on top of HBase for messaging. Um, and the reason was to improve quality of service. Um, we are competing for additional workloads, so um, we're in a good place. Um, externally, if you look at what the cloud providers are doing, Amazon with Aurora and RDS, uh, it's a highly competitive product on the cloud. And once you add or once you have uh, highly available storage, it's, it's much easier to uh, scale and operate MySQL. And then finally, if you look at the community and just my proxy for, one of my proxies for success of the community is if you look at DB Engine's rankings, MySQL is likely to become the number one database this year, which means it will pass Oracle. Uh, it's ahead of SQL Server. So I'm just, I think we're in a really good place. Uh, I get I get two questions frequently, or I'm trying to answer two questions in terms of marketing. Why Myrox? Why are we doing it? Or why might you want to use it? And, and when to use it? And for why, my focus is storage efficiency. So the I can go technical or less technical, but really it's the best space efficiency, meaning we use the least amount of space. And it's not just an implementation thing. The algorithm that we use um, is uh, an L a log structured merge tree with leveled compaction. Um, we're likely to, in the worst case, we're going to use about 10% more storage than optimal. And I'm not aware of another database algorithm that can beat the 10% overhead. 
Um, <clears throat> the B tree, you're likely to have about a 50% overhead. Um, better write efficiency. By better write efficiency, I mean if for a given workload, um, how much data are you writing to storage per transaction? So if you run IO stat while running a benchmark, we are with RocksDB and MyRox, we write less back to storage per transaction. Good read efficiency, and good is a vague term. When the project started, uh, we tried to set some goals. You know, um, At what point do we think MyRox would be usable? Uh, and so I, I tried to be vague, but I, I guessed, you know, we want to compress 2x better than compressed in ODB. And we want to do that without being too much slower. So we accepted that we might be slower in terms of response time for queries. We just wanted to be good enough. Um, and the last point for why MyRox is uh, it has benefits for both uh, SSD, NAND flash, uh, and disk. The benefit, for S the benefit for SSD is that compression is better, so you will use uh, less SSD which can be a big deal if you're purchasing the SSD. Uh, better write efficiency compared to something like NODB means that endurance on the SSD is going to be less of an issue. Um, for, for a disk, uh, the using less disk capacity is not always a big deal. If you're doing transaction proce processing on top of a disk array, you're, you might not be using all of the disks, so you might have spared uh, capacity on the disk. The benefit for disks is that um, better write efficiency means we use, use less write capacity from the disk. So we save more of the I.O. capacity for reads. So we can do more queries per second because more, we're more efficient on the write side. Um, from the user database workload, we actually compress, uh, use about half the space compared to compressed NODB and about one quarter of the space compared to uncompressed NODB. So we met the initial requirement for the project, which was 2x better compression than compressed NODB. The last point was a surprise. The write rate to storage with MyRox for this production workload is about 10% of the write rate to storage with NODB. So we're just, you know, NODB is writing 10 times as much in terms of kilobytes per second or megabytes per second to the SSD. Um, so the SSD endurance is much more of an issue. Or switching to MyRox makes that less of an issue. So for when to consider MyRox, I've been trying to slowly expanding the marketing claims I'm making for MyRox. Number one is if you're using an ODB and the database is, database is larger than memory, my goal is for MyRox to be competitive with NODB. And I'm going to say it's a goal at this point. Um, there are performance problems in MyRox. I do a lot of performance testing. Uh, I also respond, I think Valeri is probably here. Most recently, Valeri reported a performance problem, which I cannot reproduce, which is funny because I, uh, Okay, so I initially made a joke when Valeri mentioned the problem that I said, ah, I can't reproduce, um, just because it's the worst thing you can do in support is initially just tell the customer, I can't reproduce, it's not a bug. Um, but uh, I actually can't reproduce it. But So we have performance problems. I know of some of them. If The more that I know about, the more we can fix. Um, but we're, we're, we're trying to target similar query latency as NODB has, or better. So the, the goals are expanding. Progress, um, so Yoshinori speaks after me, which means he can correct all the mistakes I make. Yoshinori is definitely more of an expert on this topic. But um, from a marketing perspective, if efficient performance is how I'd like to describe my rocks. So we want storage efficiency with good enough performance. Um, 
and we got that. We deployed it in production for the user database workload, which is one uh, is our most important MySQL workload that we we run. Um, and the deployment is continuing. It's uh, moving fast with correctness. Uh, we started ports to Percona server and MariaDB server. This is a big deal to me. I want people to use MyRox, not just Facebook people, but anywhere. And for that to happen, it needs to be in a proper distribution with support. Um, and so that's possible now with getting MyRox into Percona server and MariaDB server. For 2017, uh, documentation, and not even better documentation. I, it might be safe to say we need documentation. Um, I frequently get reminded of things I forgot about, uh, in part because the, a lot of the details are on internal discussion groups. Um, we need more production deployments, and we are competing for them internally. I know of at least one other company that I won't name in public, but who is uh, potentially using MyRox today. Uh, they have a lot of MySQL talent, though, to make that happen. Um, Hopefully it will be usable. I, I can't claim it will be a GA for MariaDB or Percona server. That's someone else's decision. But it will be released in, in some form factor that can be used. And then we have a lot of performance uh, improvements. Uh, I have more details I need to publish in the performance comparisons. And then the last point is features. We want to expose uh, more of the right optimizations that we have in, my ro in RocksDB expose them via SQL. And an example is uh, time to live. So you can have data age out without having to explicitly delete it. And that's likely to be the first uh, RocksDB optimization we uh, expose in SQL. So efficiency. I've made some strong claims. I've done a lot of uh, performance results that I publish. Uh, I try to explain the results that I share. I, I don't always do it. Sometimes I publish and then people ask me and I have to go back and revisit. But a high, at a high level, you know, in terms of space uh, read and write efficiency, why is space efficiency for a log structured merge tree, why is it better than a B tree? And the first is fragmentation. Uh, the leaf nodes of a B tree will be um, one half to two thirds full, subject to a random ordered uh, sequence of updates. So if they're one half to two thirds full, you're wasting one third to one half of your space in the buffer pool in memory and uh, on disk. With a log structured merge tree, the space overhead's about 10% rather than one third to one half. Uh, fixed page size. If you use compression within ODB, your page size is fixed on, on disk. So if you have 2x compression configured, 16K page in memory, 8K page on disk, compress 16K down to 5, you still have to use 8K on disk. So it's another source of uh, wasted compression. Per row metadata within ODB, 13 bytes. With uh, RocksDB, it's 6 or 7 bytes, and we, for most of the data, for 90% of the data, we are usually compressing that down to 0 bytes. So for small rows, it's a really big deal. Uh, pr key prefix encoding is applied in memory for uncompressed blocks and on disk with RocksDB. So keys, or indexes, take up less space uh, with RocksDB. Why is write efficiency better? Well, if, if you're using more space with a B tree, you have more pages to write back. Um, so that's point number one. Point number two, we tend to operate databases configured so that the working set is does not fit in RAM. And the reason is, if you have fast storage, we have really good NAND flash. If you have fast storage and you have your working set cached in RAM, you're either using storage that's too fast or you have too much RAM. Um, and that's not always true, but since we have fast storage, we want to use it, we want to do reads to it, we shrink, we try to use as little RAM as possible. Uh, the worst case for a B tree in, in this kind of configuration is you're writing back pages with only one modified row on the page. And in that case, the right amplification is the size of the page over the size of the row. Um, that problem is uh, with a log structured merge tree, we're only writing modified rows. There are no pages on the right path. 
And then finally, the, the double write buffer within ODB doubles the write rate to storage. For read efficiency, um, we have more data in cache, uh, key prefix encoding, no fragmentation, so the cache hit rate is better. So reads are faster. A Bloom filter uh, is especially effective if you have a workload that's occasionally uh, trying to read keys that don't exist. Uh, with a B tree, you might have to read a leaf page from storage. With the Bloom filter, we avoid that. Finally, we spend less on writes, so we have more I.O. capacity to spend on reads. And then the last point is this thing called read-free index maintenance. For non-unique secondary indexes, we don't have, there's no leaf page to read. NODB's read, modify, write for secondary index maintenance. My rocks, rocks DB is write only. Um, I, I feel like I have a personal brand at stake. Prior to my rocks, I didn't really have a product. I was always on the using side of a product. And, and so it was easy to write about problems that I wanted to get fixed. I market bugs. So now I'm on a team that has a product called Myrox. So the question is, am I being honest? And it's a challenge. It's not as easy to be uh, open about problems when you're on the product side. Um, so I'm, I'm working on it, but there are problems. RocksDB is too hard to tune. Um, the, the workaround for now is uh, we're improving the defaults. At this point, I claim there's two options you need to set, the block cache size and the number of threads to use for compaction. Uh, we can't, today, we, we're not good at uh, guessing that based on the hardware capacity. If you set those two options, you'll get um, good enough performance. And I'm going to skip the detail because I'm talking too long about some slides. Um, we had someone report a problem with Sysbench, an external user or early evaluator. Uh, OLTP.Lua does uh, potentially long-range scans. Under concurrency, those were slow. Um, we doubled the QPS. We fixed the performance problem, doubled performance. Um, it was, uh, we borrowed some code from InnoDB. Uh, the code was a little bit broken. Um, InnoDB didn't notice because they weren't using the feature we were using for a performance counter that was supposed to be sharded so that different threads would uh, not compete on the same uh, memory location to do the updates. Uh, the brokenness meant all threads were updating ar array element zero, memory system stalls, fixing that uh, doubled range scan throughput. Group commit. If you turn on bin log crash safety, which is a good thing to have on, we lose 5 to 10 to 20% of throughput, depending on your workload. Uh, we're, this is uh, in discussion. So we have plans to fix it this year. Um, it just There's no code available yet. Large transactions. All uncommitted changes are buffered in memory by Myrox. If you try to insert 1 billion rows in one transaction, by default, um, you're going to need enough memory to really um, double buffer that transaction temporarily. Um, so we have this commit early option where internally we can commit before you call commit. So for bulk load, that, that helps. Um, today we have a limit on the maximum number of modified rows per transaction. We're switching that to a limit on the maximum amount of memory per transaction. Um, and then we have design discussions in progress to, to, better, uh, to be better at large transactions. And this is one of the challenges. RocksDB is meant for small transactions. You're building a generic database engine. You need to support a variety of workloads. And so this is one source of diversity we need to get better at handling. Um, so the, when I report performance, um, I don't just try, I want to explain performance. So the first number is throughput uh, transactions per second. MySQL uh, 5.6. Uh, significantly better than InnoDB with and without compression with MyRox. And I was a little bit surprised by that. But it's, it's, to me, it's not a big deal. The second column is uh, IO stat. Um, how many random, oper random reads from storage per transaction? It's about the same. They're all about doing one, one read per transaction. Third column's a big deal. How many kilobytes are written back to storage per transaction? 
NODB is 15 to 20 times worse for reasons I previously described. And I've seen this, it's not always 15 to 20, it depends on the workload, but in this case it was pretty bad. CPU per transaction similar, um, database size per transaction. Myrox is about half the size of uh, compressed NODB and about one-fourth the size of uncompressed NODB. Last column is just a one way of looking at quality of service. What's the 99th percentile response time for a frequent transaction? Myrox was lower here is better. Myrox one millisecond, NODB was six milliseconds. So when I try to explain performance, I use this kind of graph or, or table. So I show throughput, quality of service, hardware efficiency. And in this case, Myrox did a lot better. Um, the last number and then I'm done. Uh, the value of write efficiency. Two results showing why um, Myrox is doing better um, thanks to better write efficiency. Doing less on writes saves more for reads. First result is the insert benchmark for uh, in-memory database. So there's no reads from storage. Uh, NODB 5.7 certainly is faster than 5.6. But the interesting results is that when you go from fast SSD to slow SSD, NODB loses about half its throughput. Myrox loses much less than half. So I was, I was happy with that result. Prior to that, I have something from Linkbench. Similar hardware, but using going from fast SSD to slow SSD to disk. The interesting result here is that NODB is losing much more throughput as the storage gets slower than Myrox is. So again, better write efficiency allows better read, read performance. That's all I have. Okay. For the questions, uh, we're going to need the questions at the end of the Yoshino Risto, so uh, there will be the post speaker and screen.